Do you know what? Isn't it just amazing to see you all? And uh, I think what you can do right at the start is you can just turn and wave at each other. I think it's just nice and casual to say hello and uh, it is brilliant. Now obviously certain regulations mean we can't sing, we, which is going to be painful, but, but Sam can. And he's going to sing, but we can stand in the presence of God, we can lift our hands, you can swing your pants, you can... See, some people remember Trevor and There's an age thing. And you can get involved and party along. But I think to start with, it's just amazing to see Muri here, and Kevin, and Muri's mum, and of course, Amir. Look at him. It's incredible. And uh, it's so, so exciting. And we, you know, keep praying for Tim and Alison as well. Their child is due very soon. Is it weird? We go into lockdown and we come in and we've grown, not just in some people joining us, but actually in people getting born. So it's kind of an extraordinary moment. Anyway, can we stand? I'm going to pray and we're going to let Sam lead us to Father, it is so brilliant to be able to come into your presence right now. Lord, this may feel very different, but I tell you what, this feels nicer than watching TV. And Lord, it's so nice to see everyone in three dimensions. And so Holy Spirit, just come now and meet us as we worship you in your name. Amen.
Is an awesome God he raised from heaven above. just been incredible going through the Psalms. And the Psalm we looked at this week, I think is a Psalm for us for 2020. It's Psalm 29, but I think it's such a brilliant Psalm. And just after that song as well, this is a Psalm that the early church used to read to their children during thunderstorms. Okay, and this is just a brilliant Psalm. Ascribe to the Lord, O heavenly beings. Ascribe to the Lord glory and strength. Ascribe to the Lord the glory to his name. Worship the Lord in the splendor of his holiness. The voice of the Lord is over the waters. The God of glory thunders the Lord over many waters. The voice of the Lord is powerful. The voice of the Lord is full of majesty. The voice of the Lord breaks the cedars. The Lord breaks the cedars of Lebanon. He makes Lebanon to skip like a calf and... Syrian like a young ox. In the King James Version, the young ox is described as a unicorn. So there you are. The unicorn appears in the Bible, according to King James. Anyway, we keep going. The voice of the Lord flashes forth, flames of fire. The voice of the Lord shakes the wilderness. The Lord shakes the wilderness of Kadesh. The voice of the Lord makes the deer give birth and strips the forest bare. And in the temple all cry glory. The Lord sits enthroned over the flood. The Lord sits enthroned as God and King forever. May the Lord give strength to his people. May the Lord bless his people with peace. And I love this song. It's going through the storm of 2020. The flooding that some have genuinely experienced this year. Yet God sits in his place in power. And the thing I love at the end of this is just, just now, oh, Carl and Jenny, well done. As Carl and Jenny arrive, just know this, may the Lord bless his people with peace. And this morning, this afternoon, <laughs> I just want you to be blessed with peace. As a storm rages, as fear rages, let there be peace. And so, I pray for peace in this room right now. I pray for peace in our families. I pray for peace in our homes. I pray for peace in our spirit. Lord, that we would know you are enthroned and you deserve our praise. Thank you. 
Christmas this week on Monday and Tuesday we've got a Santa run going around Ridvelin. Uh, Liz and me yesterday were involved in the one up in Tylerstown and Jordan came and videoed some of that, which was absolutely fantastic. And uh, that was really up and downhill. So like this, you know, this is easy compared with that. But this is, and uh, it, it's just the joy of going out and doing that and seeing joy coming into people's lives. It, it was really moving yesterday seeing some of these kids. And some of the elderly people, we had an 84-year-old couple who said, thank you for bringing us some, some joy at this time. And you just say, it doesn't take much, but it's really important. Obviously, one of the other things is I'd really love you to keep praying is about the sports bar. Uh, we are in the crazy situation with fruit lockdown. We've been, I've been in negotiations with the owner. And one of the things we felt God say is bless him. And so we've been built a good friendship. We've been praying for his businesses and other things. But he has now dropped £125 from what he was asking to offer it to us for £250,000. And we are, um, obviously, it is, we can't do it. We, it's, we are dependent on God. So please keep praying. And, uh, but it's quite an adventure and the thought of having that as a facility. Because if we don't buy it, it's going to get knocked down and it will just be houses. But this way, it can be a place where people can still encounter one another and, and be a real community hub so please keep praying for that and now I'm going to hand over to Ryan Hello everybody can you hear me? I'm on I'm on I'm on cool well nice to see lots of you um, this is very weird isn't it it's weird being in person and before we start I must confess that this is the first time I've been to church in a long time without wearing pajamas so you know I thought I'd wear no more clothes for us today as for the first time. You're welcome. Uh, so today, I'd like to talk to us about Isaiah. It's Christmas, it's nearly there, we're nearly, um, we've nearly made it all the way. Um, and Isaiah has also been named as a kind of honorary gospel. So we have the four gospels about the lives of Jesus. And I, I read that the fifth gospel could be Isaiah because it talks so much about who Jesus is. So today, I just want us to look at three um, passages quickly, hopefully quickly, anyway, about Isaiah um, 
from Isaiah about who Jesus is. So, there's many prophecies to choose from. There's many parts of Isaiah which mention Jesus. And another um, one which I haven't talked about today is Isaiah 53. Read it, it's good. It talks about Jesus. Um, it would be impossible to just pick one. So, I've gone for three. We have to remember that Isaiah was written like 800 years before Jesus was around. So, um, when it's talking about who we now understand, it's talking about Jesus. Isaiah, or whoever's speaking, when God's speaking um, through Isaiah, he wouldn't have known that it's about Jesus. He would have just been talking about the Messiah, the one that's going to come and rescue Israel, the one that's going to come and restore um, the nation. So we can look at it as Jesus. From their point of view, they're looking as the the one that's going to come and rescue them. Um, Isaiah is a very long book though, it's not particularly easy to read because although there's lots of it about Jesus, lots of it is also not about Jesus. So if Isaiah is one of those books which you've never really looked at because it's big and scary, then I can highly recommend like a Bible handbook or even a commentary um, to help you kind of get into these books which are really good. So Christmas today, we're, um, I'm going to give you some homework for Christmas reading. But I can't help it. First of all, we're going to be looking at Isaiah 40, verses 3 to 5. So if you have a Bible with you, or if you have a Bible app, like me, it's a very good one, then Isaiah 40, I'm just going to stand here, so let's pray. Isaiah 40, verses 3 to 5. Um, it's a familiar passage when you get there. You can probably recite it for me. If I start reading, a voice of one calling in the wilderness, prepare the way of the Lord. You probably recognise that, um, and maybe you could, you could say a little bit more. Um, but this is, this is from Isaiah, Isaiah 40, verses 3 to 5. But you probably recognise it from John the Baptist, because John the Baptist spoke from this. John the Baptist says this about himself, saying that his ministry, John the Baptist's ministry, is simply preparing the way for the Lord, for Jesus, for the one who's going to come and rescue us. And just before Jesus' baptism, we read about this. Now, um, you can always tell when something's really important when it's repeated, kind of. Um, I have to tell my students repeatedly about assignments and homeworks and deadlines and that fact that reports are coming out and that, yes, I do need your work in by Sunday night at the latest, even though the deadline was Friday. I have to tell them repeatedly because they forget. Um, but repetition is also a literary tool, isn't it? It's also things which authors use. And in the Bible, we know the three Gospels, Matthew, Mark, and Luke, there's a lot of repetition because it's the same story. It's about Jesus' life. But the fourth Gospel, John, there's not a lot of crossover between what John writes and what Matthew, Mark, and Luke write. Matthew, Mark, and Luke write almost like a biography of what happened with Jesus. Um, they're either eyewitnesses themselves or they've gone around asking people to, to find out what actually happened and they've written a book and that's what we now read as the Gospel. But John, um, so Matthew talks about what Jesus said mostly, Mark shows us what Jesus did, Luke shares kind of what Jesus felt and um, he's collected these testimonies of what happened to Jesus. But John, he writes more about who Jesus was as a person and he tries to focus on the other side of kind of Jesus's holiness in Jesus' character. So, often there's parts which you read in John which aren't in the others, and there's parts which you read in the others which aren't in John. But when you read something which is in all four of them, then you know it's really, really important. So things like Jesus' crucifixion and resurrection, and those are in all of them because those are the super important bits. Even John didn't want to skip them. Well, this passage from Isaiah 40, verses 3 to 5, is also in all four of the Gospels. So it's a really, really important bit. It's very important, it's significant um, that John the Baptist said this about his own ministry, that he's preparing the way for Jesus. So another thing which is super, super important to remember is that nowadays, if I say to you Isaiah 40, or if I say a voice of one calling in the wilderness, prepare the way of the Lord, you can probably recite another 20 words maybe 30 words if you've read that bit a lot but back then they wouldn't have been reading the bible necessarily they would have been listening to it and reciting it and they would have had a much greater kind of memory culture so they would have been able to 
Like if you said to them just the first part, they would have had the whole of that chapter, the whole of that scroll even in their minds up. Just like if I say to you, um, I don't know, something like, if I say to you, I wish the ring had never come to me, Gandalf, then you might <laughs> remember that whole conversation between um, Frodo and Gandalf about how you, know, you just do what you can with the time that's given to you. But if, I, if you hear the opening line of, um, um, of blessing and honour, wisdom and power, then the whole of that song might come to you. Um, that's the same thing that kind of John is doing here. When John says, no, 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 I'm just a voice in the wilderness preparing the way for the Lord. Um, when he says that, the reason why people were confused is because they, they picture the whole of the rest of Isaiah 40, um, which continues. There's, um, there's parts about valleys being raised and hills being leveled by like equality. There's, there's parts about God's glory being revealed that the Lord ruling with a mighty arm, about reward and, and compensation or recompense for everything that's happened, about a, a God who shepherds his flock with love. Um, and there's awesome descriptions of our God in, in Isaiah 40. So when John says, I'm just the one preparing for all of this, that's what we need to think about. So Christmas is not just about baby Jesus being born. Christmas, um, should lead us to worship about everything of who Jesus is. It should lead us, it should point us towards the start of Jesus' life. And we should look at Jesus' whole life. It should lead us to worship. So your first Christmas homework, and um, if you can between now and Christmas, read Isaiah 40 and let that let those verses lead you to worship. Consider each verse, pray it through, look at each phrase and see um, who it is that's coming to rescue us, who it is that and um, John was preparing the way for and um, worship Jesus this Christmas. The second one which I'd like to highlight is Isaiah chapter 61. So if you could turn to that bit for me, then you'll, you'll be able to read it through and see what I'm talking about. Um, again, if I say Bond, James Bond, then a whole manner of things come to your mind about your favourite James Bond moments or you know, quotes and storylines and ridiculous situation um, and yeah this that premise of if i say something then you'll remember a whole other kind of i'm just referencing to what i'm like the whole of what i'm talking about that way that's not only used by john but jesus does a similar thing um, near the start of jesus's ministry in luke chapter 4 after jesus is he's starting to fulfill his calling he's trained he's grown he's been a carpenter he's moved on from carpentry now um, he's crucially he's had his 40 days in the wilderness, he's had his kind of preparation, he's learned to fully rely on God. Remember those cross bracelets we said? He's learned to fully rely on God. Um, Jesus is in the synagogue, he's in the equivalent of church on that Saturday morning. And he stands up and you know he's just he's a he's an adult man, so he's allowed to read the scrolls occasionally, and he's he reads the scroll, he reads Isaiah. And he reads from Isaiah 61, as we would call it, but from that part of the scroll. And he says, The Spirit of the Sovereign Lord is upon me, because the Lord has anointed me to proclaim good news to the poor. He has sent me to bind up the broken hearts, to proclaim freedom for the captives, and release from darkness for the prisoners. So, um, again, Jesus, Jesus doesn't, so Jesus kind of stops there, but he doesn't stop there because that's the only bit which he's talking about. Jesus says, this passage is fulfilled in your presence today, referring to himself being, he's the one who has been anointed by the Spirit of the Lord. He's the one who's going to proclaim good news to the poor. He's the one who's going to bring freedom and release and liberty. He's the one that's going to do that. And everybody goes crazy because they're like, what are you talking about? Isn't this like just Joseph's son? He's the carpenter's son, isn't he? What's going on? Um, so Jesus is from isn't just referring to that bit, he's referring to the whole of Isaiah 61. He's, he's, um, he's conjuring this kind of, every, everything which they've studied, he's conjuring that whole passage up in the minds and in the memories of, of people listening to him, which is why we get to, to mad, because just to say that the Spirit is upon me is kind of outrageous, but not too crazy, because the Spirit did come on other people in the Old Testament. So they would have been used to it happening if Jesus said it in the New Testament, maybe not too crazy, but, and saying things like, I'm going to proclaim freedom for the captives and release from darkness for the prisoners. Okay, great. 
good for you. It's the, the rest of it which is so um, outrageous as well. The rest of Isaiah 61. It talks um, not only about freedom and liberty for captives, but it talks about favour and vengeance. And it talks about comfort and joy. It talks about being crowned instead of being covered in ashes and, and kind of pain and mourning. And it talks about a garment of praise. That's where the, the phrase oaks of righteousness comes from. If you've ever heard of an oak of righteousness, it's in Isaiah 61. And interestingly, they didn't have oak trees in ancient Israel then, so the word we know as oak of righteousness should possibly actually be more like mighty men of justice or rams of what is right. So, get big. Um, so, Isaiah 61, second bit of homework, read that one through as well. Go through it. Take the time to read it verse by verse. And, oh, that's, that's loud. Take the time to read it verse by verse and um, let that lead you to worship as well. Because Christmas is about the whole of the hope that Isaiah 61 is promising as well. About things like crown and joy instead of ashes and mourning. About being um, clothed with praise and, and clothed with spirit as well. So, um, Christmas is not just about gifts and presents. But it's about the gift of God's presence with us as well, and about the, the new life which God's presence brings for us. And finally, the, the final um, part of Isaiah I'm going to look at, as it's Christmas, is Isaiah 9 verses 6, 6 to 7. And again, you can probably recite that. If I start talking, if I start reading it to you, you'll be able to finish the rest of it in your head, I'm sure. It's a very homely passage, it's a very familiar passage, especially at this time of year. It says, For to us a child is born, to us a son is given, and the government will be on his shoulders and he will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace, and it goes on. And, but it, again, like we, we reference that bit particularly at Christmas because it says about a child being born and a son being given to us. But that's, it's not only that tiny bit which is about Jesus, the whole of Isaiah and um, 9 verse. Is, is all about Jesus and all about um, what's going to happen. So, if you read Isaiah 9, if you um, glance to the top, if you look through verses 1 to 7, then you'll see so much more than just a child is given to us, a, a baby born at Christmas time. That's not the context of the passage, just like lots of bits. We can lose the context when we remember these special verses. They stand out to us when we're reading the whole thing. We forget what's around it. Or, from verse 1, or halfway through verse 1, it talks about Galilee and Jordan, clearly referring to where Jesus lives, or lived. I and mean, it talks about a light shining in darkness, which is what John was writing about at the start of John. Um, it talks about God enlarging his nation, um, which is us, which is his church, which is with the Gentiles too, with the non-Jewish people too. And um, it talks about rejoicing, as warriors would rejoice over plunder and share all that, that way to rejoice and, and share out the kingdom that we've got. It talks about shattering the yoke that burdens people because Jesus has come to bring freedom and liberty. Um, and there's, a, there's talk of how warrior's boots and bloody battle garments can be burned and got rid of. And all of that stuff happens because to us the son is born, to us the child is born, to us the son is given. That's why we can do those things. We can burn our battle garments because we have a child born to us, we have a son given. And the government will be in your shoulders. And he'll be called Wonderful Counselor. And he'll be wise and full of advice and direction and guidance. And Mighty God, because he's fully divine. He's fully God in human form. And Everlasting Father. That's a funny one, isn't it? We don't often think about calling Jesus Father. God is Father. Jesus is the Son. And there's the Holy Spirit. But this is saying that Jesus is also the Everlasting Father. Because Jesus is. It's part of the, the mystery of the Trinity. Jesus is also like the head of the church. I guess you could call him the father of the church. He was kind of a father to his disciples as their teacher. But him and God the Father are one, they're the same. Um, it talks about being the Prince of Peace. Again, the reason that um, reading through verse, uh, uh, particularly verse 5 in Isaiah chapter 9, the reason why we can get rid of all this worry and stuff is because we have a new prince, a new ruler. And he's the Prince of Peace. Um, all of the battle garments, the darkness, and the yoke, which is burning, that's is gone now. We have freedom, we have peace. So, um, it continues talking about the greatness of his increase, uh, the greatness of the increase of his peace, and of his reign, there'll be no end. 
talks about him being um, on David's throne, which is the best king Israel had ever had. And Jesus, the coming Messiah, that we know as Jesus, he's going to be like that too. And he'll be full of justice and righteousness, and it will be eternal. And then maybe the rest of it, I don't know, I think the rest of it is that it says, The zeal of the Lord Almighty will accomplish this. That's the passion of God. That's the heart of God. The will of God, the passion that God has for us, that's what helped this happen. That's what made this happen. God's heart towards us is the reason why we have been given um, a child, which is Jesus. So, this is great as well. Don't let it get too familiar. For to us a child is born, to us a son is given. Um, it's almost a sing song, isn't it? Because we know it so well, particularly at Christmas. But don't lose the victory that's in this passage as well. Okay, we have won the victory because Jesus has won it for us. We have thrown off sin and our old masters because um, Jesus has, has done it for us. And we are part of God's enlarged kingdom. Christmas is also about a victory. Jesus says this, Jesus says this part is fulfilled in him. Um, so, I'm sure you've probably heard me say several times that Jesus is not still a baby. He's not still baby Jesus. Um, Jesus did not stay just a carpenter as he was a person on earth. He didn't just stay a good teacher. He didn't leave us that option. And thankfully, he didn't stay as Jesus on the cross. There's a cross up there. He didn't stay as Jesus on the cross. But he is glorious and risen. Um, he didn't stay in the tomb. But he is our king. He's our strength. He's our shield. He's our mediator. He prays to God on our behalf. He's our king. He's our friend. He's our provider and our encourager. He's our brother. And Christmas is just like the beginning of everything wonderful and amazing about Jesus. Christmas is about worshipping all of who Jesus is, not just the fact that he was born. It starts there and doesn't finish. Um, it's about the hope that we have in Jesus and all of the promises, all of the restoration which um, the Messiah was promised to bring about has happened in Jesus and will happen in Jesus. And it's about victory because he, um, he's done it. It says in the Bible that Jesus has overcome the world. So this Christmas, don't just think of being Jesus. Think of the whole Jesus. Think of the worship of Jesus. Think of the hope that we have in him and everything he represents. And think of the victory that he has won for us. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Sam, do you want to come back up and lead us in? Are we doing anymore? We're not doing anymore. Do you want to do one more time? Yeah. Yeah, for one more time. I've ruined the plans and we'll do one more time. I don't think we're there. Considering it's Christmas, let's have some Christmas songs.
saying is Davis. But <laughs> 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 can really look at it, right? yeah. we are allowed to pray. Okay? And so if you keep the volume around about this, why don't some of us just thank God for the amazing gift of his son and eternal life? Father, we may not have been able to meet as a body as freely as we would choose, but we can always come into your presence, Father, because of your Son. The fact that he came to teach us who you are, but also to give us access to who you are as well. And Father, we just thank you at this time that we always live in hope because we always live in you. Thank you, Jesus, that you are a gift given to us, that we, um, that we can hold you, that we can have you, that we can have everything, all the promises that you um, came to fulfill. Thank you that you are for us, and you are the best gift Christmas time. Father, I just thank you that we have been able to meet again. Lord, I just, the joy of seeing people today means so much. And Lord, I didn't realise quite how much I was going to feel the emotion of it, just seeing folk turn up. And Lord, I want to pray that you'll bless us as a church. But I want to pray, Father, that others would be able to come and know what it is to be in the family of God. What it is to be welcomed by you into the kingdom of God. So Lord, at this time where there is so much stress, fear and mental health issues, Lord, I pray for your peace and for your grace and your love to come into this nation at this time. In your name. Amen. Amen. Well, you can now turn and wave to one another and say hello. You're allowed to sort of speak a little bit. <laughs> but... Um, I just want to thank you all. We are meeting next week, and uh, next week we'll be here again at the same time. You'll need to sign up again so you can have your allocated seat, so please text that number that uh, is there, say yes, I'm coming, or you can just wave ahead and say okay.